Hey, what's going on YouTube? And welcome to this month's Beige Carpet After Party live stream review for live stream number 73 that we just watched. I uh, wanna go ahead and um, say that we've got some wonderful guests here to talk about it. I'm gonna let them say hello and we'll just start at the top of the screen and work our way down. So go ahead, Barry. Going on everybody. Glad to be here for that just dazzling display of affection for the game. Absolutely dazzling. Flip. Hey everybody, what's going on? Let's see if we can make this run longer than the live stream was. Ooh, challenge accepted. <laughs> I bar. I bar. I bar. Um, and and back again with us after a recent uh, video about Clash of Wills, uh, we've got um, Fabs here. Hey, what's up, everybody? Fabs here again. Uh, I don't know. I went from trying to be a hermit to Garrett dragging me out to all of these videos. So. <laughs> I guess we've got to have some fun. Um, I thought I was going to be the only salty and petty one here tonight, but I see I'm in good company. So let's make this thing happen. That's it's good to have you, buddy. Absolutely. Salty, <laughs> thank you, salty thank you. popcorn. And, uh, and Sketch, hello. Hello. Hope everybody is enjoying their FFB content. And also, happy Beige Carpet anniversary. Yeah, this is this is the one year anniversary Woo! of the beige carpet. So, I mean, wh what do you guys think? Should we celebrate somehow? What, what what should that be? We should party exactly as hard as they did for Halloween in the stream. Exactly, like one hundred percent as hard. Hmm. All right, mission accomplished. That was it. <laughs> Here, I don't know. I, I, think don't, this, I don't have the sweet. They had a lot years. of decorations. This calls for a shark puppet, right? That's what this is. Yeah. Uh, shark puppet immediately in the 24 hour grid stream. Yeah, yeah, shark puppet 24 hour grid stream. Okay, anyways, but yes, uh, so th for anybody who's ever checked out one of these, you know, thank you for checking out them for the past year. You know, we started doing the beige carpet after party, uh, with Lilith's um live stream last year, so we're, we're officially at a year. Um, it's been a lot of fun doing these, and I'm excited to have you guys here with me. But how about a real question? Um, did you guys have fun watching the live stream and did it make you excited to play the upcoming content? No. I'll be honest, man. I tried to watch it, but the Eagles game was on. I, if they were more interested, I would have paid more attention. I, I couldn't. <laughs> Your attention was split is what you're saying. That, yeah, it just it wasn't interesting, man. I don't know. Yeah. Barry, you came out with an emphatic no. <laughs> what? And, and would, you, would you like to uh, elaborate on that? I mean, all right, so Halloween has honestly, it, it's one of my favorite holidays to pull for. It kind of always has been. Mm -hmm. um, I've loved the Halloween units from the very beginning. The sprites have honestly been pretty great from even the Dracula as well days, as garbage as he was, um, other than his STMR at the time. But I just, the complete disregard for any degree of enthusiasm no pomp and circumstance for the fact that it's a holiday stream um this this kicks off like we kind of were talking about beforehand the period of time where historically it is the most expensive time for players and their resources but from halloween through lunar new year which <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to that <laughs> yeah. um but it's it's just this felt like something that was on their list of things to do today and they did it and then it was over and i just kind of sat there on my couch watching it and stared blankly at the screen like all right well i guess that's a half an hour of my time that i won't get back and probably could have just read in-game news for mm. there is one stream a year that i want them to do games on and it's the halloween stream absolutely <laughs> Barry hit us and this could have been an email. <laughs> <laughs> this could have. You're so right, though. Like, this this could have been in-game news followed by a reasonably enthusiastic post on the Facebook group and that, like, all right, bet. Like, this, I, I don't know, man. This, this one, more than some of the others recently, left me at a loss for words because I didn't think they could really surprise me with just complete and total apathy more than they have in this last year of the game being out and this is really an entirely new bar and i'm really sad to say that mm. Mm. we did so oh go ahead sketch oh oh sure uh so like there was like a good thing for me personally but like 
kind of the rest of it's kind of negative, unfortunately. Uh, like small spoiler, I was happy it wasn't Godria because I'm a hater. But I'm a hater uh, for Godria <laughs> too. It's okay. But like Godria was fun. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm we, sorry. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you. Godry was incredible. Carry on. Uh, good team. Um, Physical chaos. We went from um, one of the best streams to one of the worst streams. Mm-hmm. Back, back, which I think is very awkward. So, so last yeah. month was was Parasite Eve, and so in mm-hmm. which was really long. Like the 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 stream was long. The the content was engaging. Like they were excited. There was a lot happening, and and that led us to to this one um now i was gonna say they did give us like if you if you kind of follow their social media like um they posted a video of like tony like setting up the the display in the background that got um, me hyped that was kind of cool mm-hmm. to see that it was fun to watch it and i mean like see see them working on it I'm, and and then i was like oh they're gonna they're gonna really go all out this year oh was, it's gonna be exciting yeah and I, I feel like that was i feel like they probably put more time into creating that short than they did other stuff but uh, i don't know i don't know so so here's the reason why this really does get to me the way that it is because we if you look at this take a step back and actually look at where the game is this is the first stream we've had since they announced complete removal of every other language support in the game Mm. that is not traditional chinese and english and for the players paying attention that's some very interesting writing on the wall and so for this to potentially have been their first opportunity to be like hey no worries we're doing this because we have things planned like even if they left it nebulous and vague which of course they would anyway but they would have at least addressed the fact that that was something they were doing and instead it's like we're all just kind of we standing regret here that like, we had right. to do that but right. we welcome well, you to stay blah 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 they acknowledge exactly the concerns because they were definitely popping up in chat people were you know putting stuff in spanish like and in english about you know, yeah the spanish players were going crazy the, the about spanish it. community is actually huge it is really yeah, it is. Yep. yeah very much so I, I don't know man this this the optics on this this entire situation were not a good look yeah okay um last question happy halloween happy halloween last question we're going into our most expensive time of the year as you guys have already discussed you know collectively how how ready are you guys for that like not at all depends are they throwing halloween chow at me because then i can pass (laughs) well you know it's like we're we're coming hot off the heels of of a of the the most recent Facebook situation. So a lot of people, you know, mm. their lapis and tickets are a little better than they were a couple weeks ago, um, but not everybody. Um, and they didn't really talk about we're gonna we're gonna get to the the like giveaway gifts for the the month and the the stream and stuff. And they weren't like ridiculously huge. So I don't know. Uh, well, I'm nervous. <laughs> But well, I'm also not, I'm not dropping a lot of banners. Money, and they could do two back-to-back banners and just drain all of that. So. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I. It's such an interesting thing to think about because why are we pulling? What's there to pull for anymore? Hmm. You know, I Clash of Wills has been broken and buggy. We're basically out of Dark Visions. Vision World is a farming event that's usually somewhat attainable for a, a decent percentage of people to share drink one but when's it the next time we're going to get one of those i mean it's just i i'm struggling to see reasons why they're gonna give me things to pull for because the content hasn't evolved to a place well content in air quotes um <laughs> hasn't evolved to a point where we need to continually pull for all of these things you know we're, we're already at 900 percent clash of wills leader skills we know that thousand percent leader skills will come in jp with what's their i guess anniversary or half anniversary right now or whatever they're doing Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and so that's that's great and good to know but why are we pulling for any of it well let me ask you uh before the systems were introduced the dark visions the clash of wills before those systems introduced you know all the way up to what is that like your three i think mm-hmm. what was your reason to pull 
Um, I pulled somewhat sporadically then, and most of it was building a respectable amount of TMRs and then later STMRs um, so that units could be done a little bit better because you could use more units to clear content than you can now. And you, it was largely gear dependent back then, but the difference between somebody who's, you know, at the end of the seven star era who was running um, Rem and Ace or the Umbral Dark Fina relative mm -hmm. to people who were still using man any seven star like xenos xeno mm. was still perfectly strong and viable as yeah. were the monks as was original elena and it was largely just gear dependent and so a mass like pulling four units to have stmrs and tmrs was rewarding because it allowed it opened up your portfolio of units to clear content whereas now you're almost pigeonholed if you want to quote unquote rank one them with being able to need very specific niche units to clear content and unless you have those units and also clash of wills gear which is not something you get from pulling units it, it kind of doesn't matter well most yeah. content also being released is like must have guardian units or mm -hmm. water or final fantasy 7 <laughs> or whatever so yeah right I think which too, they then lock you into needing the new leader skill. I think too what Flip is asking is what were we what were we pulling units for? Uh, we were pulling units to beat challenges and trials that they were giving us. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that weren't just you know locked to one week of a of a, of a one week or two weeks of playtime. Mm -hmm. So right, but we don't. Yeah, get the idea used to be. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. That's all I was saying. Like, we don't get these, right? Yeah, the idea used to be like, so the reasons I used to pull was, one, I like to try to just throw interesting things together. Back then, it was much more interesting to try to work with people to help people clear stuff because mm -hmm. we had much more variety and much more freedom to kind of do what we wanted. And then um, the other thing was, there was always the idea that something was coming. So it was good to pull for what's coming and also to help people, you know, power creep. They could let power creep help carry the trials that were already out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now, I mean, I've, I've noticed it this past week. I was looking, I was like, well, what can I try to do? Just something interesting today. And all of the units are way too good for what we have now to try to like put on display. So basically, you know, if I want to do something with Addison, all I can really do is go take on Biakua or however you say it. Yeah. Other right. than that, what's, mm -hmm. what is it? Just the 12 races? <laughs> which and are more gonna melt in front of her yeah exactly so that that's kind of been the thing now it's like well what am i what do i even have this for and yeah. then the next mm -hmm. cow mess around and be element locked and i can't use the new unit now what yep uh -huh. so that's kind of been a, a sore point for me yep okay well so like it's um it's, it's really weird because i don't think like how I have pulled for phase for the game at all. It's like I pretty much just pull for phase. Like if I really like a unit design or something like that, I'll pull for it. Like as you're saying, like you don't need stuff for content. I'm okay skipping a lot of meta stuff. Like it's just if I'm just not like a big fan of the character, like I don't care. Like Ivis, I just skipped her. Like Roka, I skipped her. Like I once we knew how all the leader stuff was going to work, we were just going to throw in all the premiums. So I was like, I'm just going to pick ones I like. Like, we have one coming up that I, or one or two coming up that I like. I can skip these. We don't even need these. Like, I, I have lightning. I can use her as my 900 if needed for anything mm -hmm. until then. And I literally skip every other one until we get to ones that I want. Plus, we were like about to hit it the season where, like, we're going to get Halloween. We're probably going to get multiple collabs in a row. We're also going to continue to have premiums at the same time. I guess it's going to be back to back premiums. Like, I'm more interested in just trying to have fun with characters I like, and that's not super casual. Except, I've cleared most content and I've ranked one classicals multiple times with characters that I like. I have to work for it a lot harder, but like, you can still do that in this game. It's just the problem is it's with how much time and effort it requires compared to the other units. It's not like it used to be, where it's just like you did it in two turns or you mm -hmm. did it in 20 turns it's now you need um, i have extremely good gear from playing for like near day one and i can pretty much play with 
whoever I want because I have the gear for him. And assuming like I've gotten lucky like here and there to like help things work out for that. So like I work a lot harder for it. But there have been times for like flashables where I didn't like a lot of use. Like I didn't like the way when he came out. And I was like, well, I'm going to try to figure out how to rank one without doing it. And it took a really long time and like several hours of doing flashables over and over again. But you can do that. The problem is it shouldn't be that hard because of the power gap in units. Mm. Because then we just continuously get into a power vacuum where you are forced or feel forced to pull for units because a lot of people that work and have full time jobs or families or whatever, right? Like, not time to spend your entire day on FFB playing for such like really bad rewards, right? Mm -hmm. For all for the amount of effort you're going to have to put in for not pulling meta units, a lot of people will just be like, I'm going to pull for the meta unit, find a guide online, and then just do it that way because they want rewards, right? But for the people that like a don't spend a lot or, or like i guess it's like the biggest thing is don't spend a lot it's really hard to use the units that you want like i don't suggest doing what i do ever because i put like a lot of time in flash world or dark business or mission world because like i don't have a lot of stuff so i just try to like make things work and it doesn't always work out right like i haven't been rank one every time i wasn't rank one this last one for those for sure like well that was kind of a pain for another reason but how, how sad that is though you're saying like don't don't play by pulling your favorite units and units that you're excited about like that's to me it's a sad yeah. a sad paradigm like ugh. no it's it's very sad because like what do you do okay like so i'm gonna pull so i'm gonna pull something for for uh like it's coming out right so like, my favorite final fantasy character is radio the next Rydia is like by far the best Rydia they've ever put in Final Fantasy, but she's uh, in FFB. She does one thing, right? She is an imperial, I mean, not imperial, a, uh, a buffing earth team, right? So if you aren't wanting to use the earth, earth team or you don't have the components to burn an earth team, and she's your favorite, she's actually useless. Like her damage is fine. Like it's actually like way higher than other buffers, but like in, in the retrospect of things, right? It's mm -hmm. fine, and but she's your favorite, and you're spending a bunch of lapis on her because you couldn't get her tickets or something, right? Like, that's actually hurting your account if you don't have the other Earth pieces around her. And guess what? Earth right now, not overly good, mm -hmm. right? So like, it has to be like long touch investment. So now you're using like, I, like I saved for this, but like now a lot of people would be like using um, your lapis, which we don't have a lot of, if you've done all the story and all the stuff, right? Even if you're like rank one in class wheels, rank one in dark vision, top 100 dark vision, that's not a lot of lapis at all compared to what you have to spend to get there. Like the mm -hmm. price, like the price, the price support needs to be like way better than that. because if it's not like, and you and you also can't do super well by like just playing with your favorites. You're like those favorites are like forcibly tied to other units, and like to be competitive, right? Right. Uh, oh, so right. It, it's kind of a mess. It is. Well, let's not let's not go too far down that that uh to, to, to the future. Let's talk right now. Let's talk right now. And uh, first and foremost, we've got a live stream to discuss. And so here we go. Um, they they started off just by showing us their costumes. And so they had a lot of discussion about um, Tony's bat ears and how they move back and forth, which I thought was really which cute. so much so much work into their costumes. Yeah. I, I really, I mean, I, I said before we got started, I really hope that they don't recycle last year's costumes, but I do wish we had some costume. Like, I don't know. But there we are. There's their costumes. Face paint would have been okay. Face paint would have been not green, though. <laughs> that, that would have been bad. Their, uh, part, part, of their, part of their plushies were disappearing as they were showing them on screen because they, they were green. Um, oh. <laughs> I, I know that all too well. Um, so there we go. There's their costumes. Good stuff. And then they went straight into talking about the um, the top five um, winners of the popularity poll. So we're going to start with number five, which was Myra. Um, love it. Love it. Myra NV when? Love this. Uh, so important. Some, sometime in the next five units that they make that could be potentially useful. I mean, oh they know God. how much people want her. They will eventually I, do it. Yeah. I Christmas do Caroler Myra. I was a huge fan of Myra, but now I'm trying to figure out what could they do to kind of keep a similar feel and still make her useful. Because as far as support, I mean, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do about Sylvia and Melissa? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just make her ice, Melissa. Ice Melissa. That's all you could do is make her ice Sylvie, ice Melissa, and call it a day. Well, I don't know about Pretty ice much. Sylvie because I'm still crossing my fingers for Snow Bunny Sylvie. <laughs> 
I will, I will look, I will stand here. I'm going to keep saying it. I've been crossing my fingers about this for a very long time. Snow Bunny Sylvie could be such a good thing. It could be. It could be. So <laughs> number number four was Zyrus, uh, which we all kind of so hyped about this. this we all great. we all kind of had some some thoughts and feelings about it, but he is there in, in number four. See, I'm here for this. Yeah, you know, I think this is he's one of the most OG uh, FFBE like global units. Mm -hmm. So like, I think he should have been one by this time already, just because they love making units that they've made and came up with envy units so like but people voting for him that seems weird that seems a little strange i agree number three so cool. and, and we can all roll our eyes in unison please um <sighs> esther now, why does this one have a crown on it because she's in third because place it's the bronze. third place crown yeah yeah it's number a bronze two doesn't crown. have a crown oh well it's gooey really uh, we're gonna see that in just a second so Esther, you know, nobody's really surprised here. Uh, already won some popularity polls. I need to say something, though. Why do we keep complaining about the number of Elenas and then vote for more Esthers? Yep. Because they at least get Sylvie right the first time. Mm. <laughs> Barrel. Barrel a, does have a crown. Okay. It's tiny. It's it's hard to see, but there is a crown. Mm. No, no. Okay. Now, this is where I take over for Barry and let out some rage. Beryl deserves more respect. I don't care. Y'all can say what you want to, but Beryl needs more respect out here. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm I think a... I think the only problem is this, of course, as we were saying before, his his kid was a little, eh, you know, whatever. But Beryl is, first of all, that's... Tom Berry. This was a perfect time to give us a Tom Berry. That's not. It's, it's not his design's fault that his kit was bad. Like that's whoever like right. came up with his kit. Like he's a great unit. He was originally designed to be like basically a ne Neo Vision before we even knew about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a whole dual mode thing going on. But for some reason, Beryl cannot win these popularity votes and it's killing me. It's because, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably because there was never a story event that told us how cool Beryl was. Um, but yeah. Like, it's it's, it's, it's really weird because like, uh, I mentioned like on here before, I had a whole headcanon, right? He would have been the perfect Halloween unit, right? Mm -hmm. So give him a costume, replace the lantern with the trick or treat bed. We have trick or treat barrel. It would have done great. He matches two of the elements of this Clash of Wills. That's who I thought we were getting. That makes sense. It would have been cool. Us. Nope. And then. All I'm saying is put some respect on Barrel's name. That's all we need. Oh, no, okay, I'm done. We're definitely Barrel fans here. But but then. <laughs> Okay, Second so place I, is I, still better than who should have been on this list. It's your your you first, wrong. you last. You're not wrong. Now I, I I have a theory here. I think that nobody actually likes Zon or who they Zon like, is. They like what Zon hmm. Mastermind Zon does. But no Draw one actually cares everybody. about what who Zon is. Uh -huh. I mean I think that's a lot of people playing. Oh good. I think that's a lot of units. Like, I think that's why Esther got so much popularity. It wasn't mm -hmm. because she had bunny ears. It's because she was broken when she first released. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very. I'm just people... thinking. I bet most people playing today wouldn't even know where OG Zon came from. Right. He's an Easter nope. unit. Yeah. No one. Yeah, exactly. No one played that event because people didn't exist in the game at that point. Like, <laughs> I I remember being excited about Zon's uh, TMR. Um, the teddy bear because like it gave you a poten potential chance to counter and refill your MP. Like, I yep. love that. Um, people, voted for for this, for that. people voted for this on because they think that he's going to mechanically work the same as Mastermind's on. And I have he's I'm, not. I jokes think on you there. Be wrong and it's going to be very disappointing for everybody. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. he's just going to be a reskin Zidane. He's going to be a double hand dagger damage dealer that doesn't do anything. Oh yeah, no. Get ready. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Good luck with that, guys. Um, but yeah, so there's there's your winners. Um, uh, uh, to me, I feel like kind of a small number of votes compared to how many players there are, um, which is yes, a little sad. But you know, well, you had to vote outside a game, so true, true. Gumi could have saved themselves a lot of effort and just made masterminds on it in VA. Because all we want to do is be able to do what he could already do, just have the X levels to use him in Cal. Mm, so if they yep. just made him an NBA, they could have saved a lot of this hassle. Absolutely correct. Mm. So that's fun. Yep. 
the the next part of the popularity poll is coming um so it's coming up on uh this thursday um do you guys have any favorites that you'd be throwing out here why what a great question there's only one correct answer to this and and normally as i sit here and think about this people are gonna think i just really like bow users no i don't no i don't no i don't no i don't however ong is the best unit they've ever done now lunera to this day has set the gold standard back in what did we say it was june or july of 2017 mm -hmm. for how story events should be because they're well put together they make you care about the characters that are on the banner they give them depth they make you excited when a unit shows up later and the units themselves honestly were a big deal I mean, Ruggles by himself, not so much. Bran was a great budget option for a lot of clearing things. Lunera is where AR chaining came from, because mm -hmm. she was the only Oriole Ray unit. Mm -hmm. She was, Oriole Ray is her ability. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And she could do pretty good buffing at the time, if you didn't want to necessarily lock yourself into bringing OG Ramza just to have him be enhanced and sing. Oh, that's you me. Know, <laughs> Lunera was good unit mm -hmm. but the reason you cared about her was because the story was so <laughs> absolutely spectacular and she laid groundwork for like a template of how so many great units are lunera has to be who wins this and the problem is because they refuse to rerun these story events anybody who started playing the game after the first anniversary which I don't think it's absurd to say is the majority of the player base by a striking degree have no idea who she is or why she matters other than that person you get Force Mysterion for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, like fully agree. I think there's only two choices, uh, two choices on the list and I'm also in the Lunera camp. Uh, story Vance a big deal. She also had good animations. She was a mm -hmm. huge, deal for, huge deal at the time. Good STMR. STMR still good. Mm -hmm. um, that whole story bridge was really good. Uh, I'm also going to pitch books for Lauren. Because I think Lauren is a big part of the story. She shows up. She continues to show up in like all the major anniversaries and story arcs. She does. Like, she's not quite as much around as, as Charlotte, but it's, it's not too much less. Uh, she hadn't had a unit when, when she was a big deal for the game. She was meta the entire time where, that, like, she was meta when her 7-star came out. She was meta when her NBA came out. Her, she was so meta that they postponed her NBA and we got it, like, super late. She was still good when she came out. She deserves a base NB. So if you're not voting for Lanera, I hope you vote for Lauren. Uh, they're both very good story characters and it's nice that they're doing this poll that doesn't have all the global exclusives because it seems global exclusives get a lot more of the bullets and i think that's what they're thinking so they're like they're trying to get an idea of like the actual uh main story units and stuff like that like the jp gets to like give us votes on so yeah uh i i'm a very pick pick blue narrow lord <laughs> Well, King, into what you said I, there, I think the reason that the global exclusives get more votes is because they're released with better kits. Therefore, people have a better time playing the game mm -hmm. with a unit mm -hmm. that can actually complete the content. Um, but that's not the unit's sprites or story's fault, you know, mm -hmm. that their kit is less. But the person playing that started in year six knows that Esther does damage. And I like Esther because she does damage. I want a new Esther you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yep. that's why i think that those the global exclusive units get higher votes is just because their kits are usually better for sure um now what before i say mine um i want to i want to say you know, what is the parameter for this they said it was jp what they're the jp ffbe original units yeah okay um all right, so they're not. They didn't say that they were like story units or anything no. on there, because I see the um, fan design units from uh, the FFB JP on there on mm -hmm. the list, and yes. I was like scratching my head. I was like, do we get to vote for those? You know, Asher Rose made me so happy to see just awful garbage units, <laughs> but such a fond memory of that raid box pulling mm -hmm. for all of them. Mm -hmm. And um, what uh, what is the name 
for the unit that I see on the list here that's two to the left of Tulian. Oh, two, God. Tulian, two to the left. I don't, Tulian. I don't know that one either. Um, I can't see it well, to be honest. She looks she's like got she's... like a harp. Yeah. Well, let, me, let me full screen. I don't uh, know that I'm going to be honest. I don't think we have that in global. I, yeah, I nope. don't think we have that unit. Yeah. I don't recognize it. And mm -mm. I mean, I've been around for a long time. So did they, are they going to give us like units that they skipped as voting options? What about, <laughs> so if you look at Tyvis on the, on the left hand side, and then there's two to the right of Tyvis, I don't recognize that one either. Um, uh, that is, is Sheraton? Sheraton? Yeah, oh, it's Sheraton. That's Sheraton. Oh, well, I've never taken Sheraton into a piece of content. So there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why. Okay. I'm wondering if um, the one we were asking about with the harp, I wonder if that's one of the Chamber of Arms uh, original characters because oh, we skipped uh, all of them. Uh, what's the yeah exactly? We skipped the robot one though. Uh, mm -hmm. God, I forgot their names. Well, they came uh, with what, their um, own story events and and uh, right. three and four star units. That's probably what it is. Yeah. So uh, what, did um, they, did did JP ever go through them all? No. No. no, the JP oh, okay. started the content and then they realized giving away free units for those is, isn't working for us. They stopped doing it. Yeah. Um, so, okay, well, I was okay, thinking so, that might be where she came from, but I guess not. Yeah. So the units that I would vote for on this in order would be um, obviously Medius number one for me. Uh, he's he's my boy. Um, and then uh, second, I don't see her on the list, but I would vote for Chloe because her original kit was amazing. Mm -hmm. All she did was just incredible resistances at the time. It was 70% resistance to all allies for basically every element. And um, then she also did uh, targeted killers and you can multicast. She was one of the few units with multicast at the time. So you could be like fire resistance to the whole party and then like 50%, which is good at the time, avian killer to um, one person. And so she was like really good. And all of those moves were called like anti wind method. And I mm -hmm. liked that part. Yeah. Um, and then uh, for my third, cause they give you three, I'd probably pick anybody that's not one of the main characters like Rain or Reagan or, you know, Fina, which I hope that none of those make the top 10. Mm -hmm. I have some more obscure thoughts too. Okay. I'll let everyone else finish talking before I give my obscure unit thoughts. I I think I'm going to vote for Soleil. Great option. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I always loved the way she buffed and broke at the same time. So, and then they kind of redid that with Emperor Fu like a couple years down the road. And like, I really like him too. Um, but uh, Soleil for sure. All right. Uh, All right. Well, I'll throw in my obscure ones then. Obscure ones, um, and then we're going to move on. So I'd love to see a Sylvia make an appearance. Yep. Um, Lunera will first and foremost always be first for me. Um, Sylvia would be great because the Sylvia shine idea mm -hmm. was almost made to be a Neo. Um, I also love Mercedes. I think it's we're well overdue for a good axe unit that could do everything that Vilk was supposed to do, but better and correctly. Mm. Um, and while she was in the story for such a brief amount of time, I just, I loved her, her character, and I loved the sprite and her animations back then. She did have a really cool attack animation with like her axe spinning around and making a big mm -hmm. splash. Yeah, it was pretty cool. All right. Well, that's the poll, so make sure you're voting. Uh, obviously, uh, you vote vote with your heart, uh, and if you can't vote with your heart, vote for Lanera. Um, Correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> cool deal. Now, this this is where, like, I was really, really surprised here, and I think just talking from you guys, that you were all really, really surprised here, where they, they started saying, you know, building up hype for, okay, here's the new unit. Uh, are you guessing? Did you guess what it was? Oh, I, we guessed, I think I saw someone say in the chat who it was. And I was just like, what? <laughs> why, why is this happening? Guardian of the Underworld Chow. Um, powerful mage with water, light, and dark element attacks. Access to green and white magic as well as strong support abilities useful in cow. Can activate different area effects when summoning espers. What are, you, what are your guys' Im immediate thoughts on Guardian of the Underworld Chow? I hate this. I almost threw my phone. 
I'm, I'm personally indifferent to it, to be honest. My, my only gripe is this was a good time for Beryl. Mm-hmm. But I'll let that ride. And kind of dressed like Beryl, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're halfway there. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I'm in the minority here. I actually like the sprite. But it makes no sense. Oh, no, the sprite is adorable, okay? You got the pumpkin artifact in the background. Um, it, it, it looks really cute. But uh, I, like, it, it's just really weird to me. I will say I'm happy it's not Gabriel still, but, like, it's super out of field. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Is this time for a Gabriel debate? <laughs> 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 I, just, I would have preferred Godria. I, I feel like Godria so would at least I. would have made sense. Um, mm-hmm. This this to me makes no sense. Um, Godria deserved it, but you know, it's it's bringing over a different holiday to to the wrong holiday. It's for a little more information. It, it says that when you summon Leviathan, uh, you get a 40 40 um, percent amp field. Summoning Alexander gives you a thirty percent amp field for light. Um, and 30 for dark when you summon Diablos. Um, one thing that I think some one of you brought up is it doesn't clearly state that Chow has the ability to summon all mm-hmm. espers that are on the party. Um, at least I don't mm-hmm. remember them saying it um, and doesn't say it right then and there. Um, so yeah, that can that can lead to some problems. Um, something that's like probably worth noting and like, I think we mentioned this like before before we uh, started talking about the video. Like for for you personally, right? like for people that like light teams, mm-hmm. there's a good chance this is a huge deal, right? Because like light needed help like really bad, and if Chow's like damage is good on top of having the light field that the team desperately needed without wasting a slot, right? It's kind of like a really big deal. Like the other two elements, whatever, like. Water is not a very good element, and dark has like multiple field users to choose from. But like light, one of its biggest issues is the way that its fields work. You really don't want to bring those characters to your team mm-hmm. a lot of the time. It's just dead damage. But it's how actually, even if it's just a couple nukes, right? Like if it's just like low consistent damage in a couple nukes, that's such a big deal for team compositions for light. That like if that's your thing, like you're you're like a big Rick fan, right? You're big. I'm e- I ex- like, let's say somebody ex three Ricks. It's like this is my favorite character. This can go a long way to helping you enjoy the game and the content. Be able to use your favorite character. Like he could be a very big in the light. No, he could. could. Now I will say that the existing light amplification field is also currently thirty. So you know, Fina the Return does a thirty percent light field. Mm-hmm. Um, but Fina's kind of. I think of, they got buffed to forty. Maybe with, uh, with, with the crowns. With the crowns, maybe. So, but I mean, she also provides a nice killer buff for humans and, and birds, um, and a bunch of other stuff. But she's not doing. She's not doing any damage. So, I mean, I, I do agree with you there. Like, if Chow can do decent damage now, Chow's primary focus is water, though, not light. Um, so you're potentially. Ooh, that's a good, a good point. You're potentially blending elements. Um, if Chow has a 150, it's gonna be water. Um, which makes so much sense for a Halloween unit to be a water unit, um, mm. but um, you know they can't Splash. all be they can't all be dark. So, because... so I will counter argument that a little bit, only because we recently got Kerr, or, or here where he had a second one had second one fifty amp for Clash of Wills. So there's a chance that he has a True. water one for outside of Clash of Wills, and then we and then he has a light and or dark one, maybe both. I mean, I doubt it, but like maybe I, both. I guess that's possibly. not impossible. But but speaking of Kier, another issue that Kier has is that you are locked to using his fields. Um, they're like a single. They like use your entire turn to do the field. Since you create fields by summoning an Esper, that locks you into creating a field just by using your summon gauge. Mm-hmm. And if you're happening, let, let's say you're crazy and you want to do a light team, for example, and you want to have Sukiko put up the light and peril field and then chow put up the light amp field you can't do them both because 
she uses Esper crystals to create her light and pale field. So you have to, you're wasting turns spreading this all out. Um, potentially an issue. You could, you could like do her light field, something else, and then Imamori to refill the Esper gauge, and then Chow could go. But like you, you know, you're getting way more complicated at that point. Anyways, I digress. It's an issue potentially. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I'll take the low-hanging fruit here. Okay. <laughs> so, well, it's my low-hanging fruit. So, Chow. Um, there's a lovely other unit from Chow's original banner. <laughs> Two of them, in fact. Who really, really could do wonderful things in the current state of the game with all of these wonderful things that we now do and how fire is super fun and how we love a good support unit who potentially could be geared for multiple races that, you know, perhaps in the same event that Chow is even from. And um, I couldn't help but notice that neither of these units has seen any love, attention, nor affection since their original banner. And yet since then, Chow has now had two brand new iterations two two of them plus a wonderful vision card really two because his base vision card was great mm -hmm. this new vision card is great his special floofy poof dog looking face card looks really nice um but but why why can't we just accept that there were other units on this banner when it first came out that were the one of the big reasons people even pulled for Chow in the first place, because just in case everyone forgot, because everyone would forget at this point, Ong was one of the original Limit Burst finishers who could just drop an absolute nuke whether or not you were using fixed dice. And yet, we forget that he exists, even though he was a top 10 finisher of the last fan vote. Mm. And instead, we get a completely out of left field, seemingly from nowhere, pumpkin backed witch chow pumpkins aren't a part of his anything like it's it's just i, I but he's the a good, choices he's a good boy though no question <laughs> that isn't that is an unavoidable truth but yeah. the rest of this is so odd yeah. that i just don't get it and then make him a water dog like I, <laughs> you could have given him like a squirt gun or something i don't know <laughs> it's just, <sighs> I won't hang on it too long, but Ang could have been a good one because the I, no I mean kidding. when you look at it visually, his LB was kind of like dropping a sun on him. Mm -hmm. well, he Ang was could have been. Huh? He was the sun breaker. You yeah. you pulled him to kill that. Uh, what was it, Benu? You pulled him to kill mm -hmm. Benu because Benu yeah. was like this. I'll call it a trial that had released at the time, and you weren't killing it if you didn't have Ang. Mm -hmm. Nope. But I was thinking about the the animations of it. Ang was basically like it looked like you were dropping a sun on the boss. Mm -hmm. They could have made him some kind of vampire or something, and his LB could have been like dropping a moon on him, Stop. or something crazy looking like uh, if you play Final Fantasy VIII, mm -hmm. uh, oh Diablo says gravity you're so well. Right. You're yep. so right. That would have been cool. But he's uh, not a good boy. He's not, he's a, not good a good boy. Good boy. He is not. But he was Husbando. He was so. Mm -hmm. That counts for some people sometimes. 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 It's just they, not this time. They spend a lot of time talking about this skill, Fluffy Watchdog. Um, one use every five turns. They sure did. <laughs> boost, boost attack and magic for all allies, LB damage, reducing his own spirit and boosting magic for the next attack, but activating that thing again, that boost, for two more turns. Um, so then they give us the numbers. The, the magic and attack buff is only 300. The LB damage is only 250. The uh, boost is 300%, which is full. Um, and then it recasts who's a good dog, which is the boost again for the next two turns. Um, but doesn't Genesis have something kind of like that sketch? Mm hmm. Where like it, oh, like he, he like gets a, he gets a, a boost like two turns later. Uh, so Genesis has like a couple of abilities with delayed effects. The mm -hmm. most notable one is the, ginormous amount of MP recovery. Right. Mm -hmm. But Genesis is uh if you like he he has a yeah, he has a he has a delayed he has delayed buff and then he has like whatever you want to look at, like the double mm -hmm. uh store. Like where you can use like the back to back turn double right. stores. Yeah. So, like yeah, he has something like that. 
Okay. Yeah, Just... it's um preface is the one that you can multicast with everything else, and you use that at the end. That'll give them the store, and then uh, final verse is the one that will that's right, do store verse. for like two or three more turns. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just, and I... that's the one that also gives the MP. It's, it's both one skill. I thought there was something like that. I don't, I've only used Genesis a couple of times, so I wasn't one hundred percent sure. But I, yeah, I, I thought so. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I feel like these numbers are not that exciting. Like three hundred percent, two fifty percent, like. For a brand new unit, this is just not stellar. So that's this reads it's like kind of a running the mill for like a regular party, not yeah, cow. Yeah, it's kind of running the mill for just everything else. Yeah, it, the way that the skills are worded read to me like a store skill, mm-hmm. which to me makes it seem like everything he does at the start of his next turns, whatever the next action he takes is, will get the store effect. Yeah, um, because right. you know the three hundred percent with the two hundred whatever is is typically that. Mm-hmm um correct i it, that just feels like it's gonna make it very odd to play around that if you know that your first action of each new turn is gonna get that store yeah so it sounds like he's gonna want to set up and then do damage for two turns in a row yeah yes. it's, I'm, I'm picturing it's gonna be just like genesis you use final verse whenever you plan on spamming uh purgatory for two or three turns yeah which could make which makes setting... sense for genesis yeah it, it could in make Child's building case, your you rotations just... really weird yes in child's case you probably cast this whenever you're getting ready to start doing damage and then you just spam some way to fill his lb and just use his lb two or three turns in a row it's mm-hmm. probably what it's going to be mm-hmm. well problem is it looks like he's an sob unit so i don't see how useful that would be right oh. it also means that that's but... two or three turns in a row that make it really awkward to use any of his support skills that they're trying to sell us on yes this is sounding hey i didn't say it was efficient (laughs) this is is, is making me roll my eyes more and more as we talk about it um then this um chow is getting arcane supplementation which i believe is Dwayne's skill Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so we're getting the 450 attack and we're getting the 450 all buff with the 350 lb damage and morale fill so like and it even i mean it's the same skill it gives it gives three stack mirage has the same name like it's kind of goofy like it was supposed to be i don't know it seemed like Dwayne was gonna be like the person who had this this is the reason you pulled for Dwayne, and now chow's getting it well that was like a year ago uh it was like half a year ago it was like you know april it feels like an eternity in ffb it does, it does. We're, we're, we've <laughs> we've power up so many times since april you know yeah crazy but yeah like this is the reason i brought uh Dwayne for the last cow mm-hmm. was i just want to do something different and part of what made him different was having arcane supplementation mm-hmm. right now the only thing that redeems chow for me to want to just use all the time is could be a blessing or a curse depending on how you see it would be a physical mage mm. but that's that keeps causing so many people problems that i don't mm. i don't know if that'd be a good idea or not yeah i'd prefer it but that would suck for people who really don't have mages and then have issues with these uh, dark visions later stages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I don't know. People people do complain about that a lot. Yeah. Often. Uh, and then this. Um, so Treat from the Underworld, this is the leader skill. So it's all stats 300 for Clash of Wills category units or 650 for attack. Defense Spirit 500, Magic 900% for Clash of Wills category in Clash of Wills. Could they could they have made this a little more complicated? Probably. It's like we don't want to give him an all nine hundred percent leader skill because then people would regret Tyvis. So it's basically the difference between uh, Ibarra's new form or Vengeance Ibarra mm-hmm. versus Deoxys. I guess they didn't want to give him some nine hundreds because that would kind of make him. On premium level, yeah, he would comp- and I'll be competing with like it right after yeah. Roka and Tyvis. Yeah, he'd be so they just the took a little bit here, took a sprinkle of this here, and then it's like, okay, well, we gotta sell them, so bam, give them a nine hundred. Uh-huh. It's definitely something, right? It's it's in a way kind of better than Rick's. Uh, it's a little worse than Elena's, as long as you're bringing mages. Um, it's something. So. I'm I'm gonna be on the side of uh, I think this leader skill is good because the unit is not premium. Mm-hmm. 
Right. And um, this is a 900. Like, it's just a mage leader skill, right? Yeah, just mainly for mages. But, yeah. Yeah, it's, I just view it as a mage meter skill, like, pretty much, right? But, like, that's really cool because eight. That, that's actually a big selling. This is a big selling point mm -hmm. to the unit for me that makes me want it. Uh, I actually prefer mages because, like, they have way less, like, straightforward kits than, like, physical LB units to me. Like, sometimes they have neat things that you can do. Their animations tend to be a lot better. Like, there's exceptions, right? Mm -hmm. But a 900% leader skill for, like, a group of mages that I just want to go run for fun for, like, extra, like, cla flash runs or something like that, or maybe even, like, a full, like, we're going to see how high we can get. I think that's really cool. It's not on a premium unit, uh, even if it is time limited, right? So I guess that's like the caveat mm -hmm. to like it be it being as good as it is. But like, is this unit like is this a must-have leader skill? No. But like, if you're somebody like you're a big mage player or something like that, I think this leader skill is actually like pretty sick. Oh no, nine hundred is fine. The the issue, I think one issue that people are going to run into is that it's only for Clash of Wills category units. So there's. There's no fire. Right. It's not like you. It's not like this is good for all water mages. You know, this mm -hmm. is only Clash of Wills. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's not surprising, but that's 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 the issue. Combined well, with well, combined well, with all the weird numbers, I mean, that's the issue for me. Yeah, uh, I didn't mean to make it sound like it was a bad skill. No. I didn't mean to make it sound like it was a bad skill. I just, I don't know. I, when I look at this, I'm more of a defensive type of player, so. In my mind, I'm just not really seeing a need to run this over Atlanta unless I just really don't need the bulk. But having a universal 750 just, I, I feel like I can just settle for that and keep going. Mm -hmm. So that's just more, uh, it's more about my play style. No, 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 that's completely understandable. Wait, yeah. I, I I mean, that makes perfect sense to me. My, my, the only thing that like what like the biggest like pushing factor for me liking it besides like preferring made in general is that with the new cap this may help a lot of people that like can't quite get there with the 750 right like if we do have like a full mates cap let's say you do have the extras the extra 150 percent leader skill assuming that you can stay alive right and then like you might not be able right. to like you set everything up it could help a lot for accounts that don't have everything right mm -hmm. so like if you right. i i think your route is way better for for veteran players and people that like you can plan everything out like know what they're doing in the game but i think that this like this type of leader skill like it's obviously not like insane or anything like that right but the extra 150 percent boost um could be like the difference between like a mid-tier account hitting like top 1k or or like barely missing out or something like that well i mean to be fair the other good part of it is i, I like mages more myself like you said um, the other good part of it is having 900 for Universal Cal mm -hmm. means you can bring Malfazi, Ibarra, Chow, mm -hmm. and then um, they oh, all have some kind of store ability. So you yep. get extra, you, you get more bang for your buck out of buffing mages that hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's useful. I didn't mean to make it sound like it was bad. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm saying I completely agree with you because I'm, I'm normally more of a more defensive player. Because, like, if this was a 900, I. This sounds bad, but like again, this is just for me, right? Uh, if this was a nine hundred uh, percent attack one, I just wouldn't care as much. I just think it's cool that like that magic has something like this because, like, let's be honest, a lot of the time mages are like worse than physical characters. So like, oh yeah, mages always get treated horribly by <laughs> a lot. So it, it's cool, like something like this exists. Like if it if it if the and and like some of these flash are like really hard. It's just kind of cool that like. If it gives them this is a non premium leader skill, which is like another big thing for me. Even even being mm -hmm. uh, time limited, uh it's still way easier than pulling a premium, especially with like how banner how how much banners cost nowadays for premiums. We don't know how much this banner costs, right? Because nope. like if if they keep if they keep chow at like and this is still a lot, right? But like the sixty K ish or sixty three K or whatever like the normal banners are, as opposed to like the like eighty K or whatever or premiums are at it's like really i don't know the exact number like maybe one of you guys do but like it, it's a huge difference right so like this being easier to get i don't foresee as far as like a mage centric damage uh leader school i can't see us getting a much better one than this on a non-premium right uh, so like i don't know i think it's neat 
it's not OP, it's not a must have, it's not like, go spend all your laugh as you need this, but like, if this is something that applies to you and it helps you enjoy the game, like, that's cool. This is a, this is a cool niche thing for, for mages, and if you're a mage player, like, you may want this around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what? I think you sold me. If they make him a physical mage, I know people will hate it, I'm sorry. But if they make him a physical mage, I I'm with you. A physical yeah, like mage that's not tied to an element. I like that it's like this sort of power level, but it's not necessary because if you run into something yep. essentially being like necessary, uh, then you get the problem of the previous child that we had where everybody was using him in guides and everything like that, but people who had not joined the game during Lunar New Year just mm -hmm. couldn't do it and mm -hmm. they were ruined for, they were like, well, I just won't do the content because I don't have the chow tank and they just stopped doing content. So if you try to make something time limited but to that power level, then people who weren't there then can't do it. So I think it's good that he's not to this necessary need to have power level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did they mm -hmm. say he was time limited? Well, seasonal units. Uh, they are. didn't, but it's kind of just presumed. It's true. Yeah. Let's move on. Odd that they wouldn't say it. That that would be really cool if he wasn't time limited. That, that would be like. Like you can get, it'd be way easier to raise than sitting in the, the shard dungeon for 200 years. Yeah. Hey, speaking of limited, it's Charles TMR. There we go. Oh, there we go. So, Good segue. Yep. Yeah. So STMR <laughs> is not a weapon. It's armor. It's actually a robe um, with defense and spirit 30, magic 104, um, MP 150. Um, gives Chow 350 magic. Um, when you are setting Leviathan, you get bonus 200% stats. Um, and you boost your killers against beasts, demons, fairies, and reapers by 50%, and LB damage 50%. Um, all pretty nutty. Um, and then the TMR, um, Hananomicon, the 200 magic two handed staff um, that gives Chow a thousand magic and gives a bunch of killers against all the relevant stuff beasts, demons, fairies, reapers. I think his trust mastery reward is canny Namicon, as in like canines. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a book, you know, historically books about have, dogs. Yeah, <laughs> books have been uh, staff weapons in in FFBE for a long time. So yeah, the dogs and the things they eat. Yes, hence the nom. Mm. Well, it's both well, like Necronomicon, but Canonomicon. <laughs> oh, it is a book, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a book. Yeah, huh. it's, it's a it's a, a it's book a reference. Staff. Yeah, book staff. Book rod. Yep. Wonderful. But armor, armor STMR. Nobody's excited about this but me. Oh no! No 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 oh, no! Oh no! It's no, incredible. No, fantastic. Okay, good. No, no. I want to make sure it wasn't no, the only no. one. No, this is a. I want three of these. I'm not gonna have three of these, but I want all of these, especially with them moving the three race colossal wheels. Stuff like this. Please keep making it. I will. Pull, I will try to take it for all of them. Or, or and I can afford for the other reason because yeah, like yeah. these are invaluable, especially if we were talking about the home mage team earlier. If these line up, even two of them, mm -hmm. this gear is absolute premium for mages. Mm -hmm. Very good. While we're on the topic, just a quick note. Uh, I had someone ask me about grabbing materials from uh, the cow exchanges. And all I can say is if there's materials that have three races, you know, and they're free or easily farmed, I, please get them because these three races being more common, you never know, as we were saying, when then they'll line up and they'll be useful. So it should never be a question of if, just please get them. Get the killers always. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's all. I just want to make a point about that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anything else to say about the STMR and TMR before we move on? I think the I think the TMR is pretty, pretty standard weapon, but you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Only he could. Yeah, it's, only, it's only for him, so Basically, there's not much we could do about it. You're not going to get yeah. seven copies of the Canonomicon. Mm -mm. Not unless you want them on your bookshelf. Yes. Is it? Is it? Is it made of dog leather? Uh, I don't even want to go. Oh there. dear, I hope oh, not. I'm going to get. Oh some... man, hold on. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get. I'm We're get getting dark here. Move on. That. Okay. Um, here's <laughs> Chow's vision card. Tricks and or treats. Um, it has level 10 abilities, so we can see that it's not a premium unit. Um, and Magic and Spirit 130 at level 10. Um, gives you a bunch of Magic and Spirit when you wear a staff. Um, 
and gives you 100% magic and spirit true double hand. Um, and uh, for FFBE units, 500 flat uh, magic and spirit. So how does trick or treat word again? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm oh. not sure what trick or treating is. I think he said something about. I've never heard paper. about it. Yeah, um, I know there's candy involved. Um, oh man, what did I start? <laughs> oh goodness. Don't, the, don't I, don't I will say this. Oh. I will say this. The animations on the card were really, really cute. It's um, amazing. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, I think it's cool. Just. De oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, that's it. Yeah, I just think the animation. No, I think crazy. it's a cool little decent generic card for mages or spirit users. You know, not, nothing crazy, but I like that know. it fills both roles, right? So, like, you know, spirit yeah. users or mages can use it. Um, and this could also be really good for your glass cannon type mages who maybe need a little more spirit bulk. Yeah. Yes. Um, this could be. This is for all the. Uh, this is for all the sue you. Oh, I'm sorry, sue you. I gotta quit doing yeah. that. Oh gosh, this would be <laughs> really good you. For I keep calling a sue you like from yeah. twice. Sue you. Yep. I, I, I did it like to be funny, but now it's a habit. No, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. This would be good for her, for any of us who actually want to go out of our way to use her, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. base form is a mage, second form or shift form uh, does spirit damage. So yep. this is finally a card that's good for both. And she has this some special rules, utility remember. and is water focused. Just FYI. Exactly. Oh, so what you just said is that she's going to be in the mysterious pool of pool of boosted units. Oh, don't do that. You underestimate Gumi, don't, don't you? Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is yeah, I probably like have was... a new home screen card. Uh, that would This would make a, a lovely home screen card, except for the as long as the theme music's good. Well, yeah, I'm more of a music guy. I care more about the music plays. Same. That's why Squall's card is my home screen card. Good choice. So let's water skate. I care about the animations. That's why I have Maeve's card. Because I think it's a cute animation. Maves is very it's cute. great animation. So this was not the only card they showed us. Uh, this showed us this card. Chow's Cheerful Hollows Eve. Only level one card at magic 140. Boost magic by 80%. Magic 500. LB damage by 100. And water resistance by 50%. Um, also gives you magic 100% true double hand. And then for Chow only, the Guardian of the Underworld Chow only, boost magic by 1000. Um, it's a special card. I went back. Good art. It's very art, very cool art. There's a bomb and a slime on the welcome mat. Oh my gosh, there is. It's super mm -hmm. cute, right? Oh my god, a bomb and flan. Yeah. So I went back yeah. and listened to the live stream before we before we started this, and they did not specifically state how you get this card. Um, I listened to it a couple times and they, they didn't say you get this at EX3 Chow. They didn't say there's going to be a special step up banner. Um, it, it just was not clear. So what do you guys think? How, how do I you mean, think this is only gonna be? 140 and it's only really good on him. So maybe free. Oh, I don't know about that. Why would they give us something that gives a thousand magic for the new unit for free? But it's to, only to entice, for the new unit. To entice you to pull that new unit. Yeah, to, to, it, because oh, it's only good man. for them. So it's the lead in. It's like, well, I got the card. I might as well go for the unit. That would be striking. Magic 80%, magic 500, LB damage 100%. Oh, I didn't even see the magic 500 the first time I read it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. This yeah. might be a step it's up one, card. It's 1500 magic. Yeah, for, for Chow, Chow, but. Every, I didn't. I didn't think any other units were getting flat magic out of it, but now that oh, I see well, that, mm. okay, now it makes me believe it's a step up card. I was gonna yeah. say when you think it yeah. came from Chow being EX three, but now that I see they get flat magic from level one, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a step up. I'm card. gonna agree with the step up card now. Yeah, it's just it's just weird that a step up card would have stuff that's specific for one unit. Well, that's what made me think it had to be from EX3 before because I only saw the third skill. But now that I see the magic by 500 in the first skill, mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense why it would be a step up. Because now everybody still gets flat magic. So, mm -hmm. now, okay, uh, yeah, it's got to be a step up now. Elena's was the only character we've ever had that got you a different card at EX3 that was not premium. Um, mm -hmm. Was right. And I, I recently got hers and I honestly don't even remember. Do you have to level, did you have to level up her card? The uh, uh, EX3 card? Yes, you do. I think okay. so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a it's a ten level card. Okay. Okay, so so I guess what we're looking at here, it is looking more and more like a step up card. Um, but they didn't specifically say, so who knows? 
Uh, yeah, I thought the only flat magic went to Chow, so I was thinking maybe it just come from him. And now that I see you get flat magic in the first first ability too, yeah, it's gonna be a step up. There's no way, mm -hmm. and 100 percent LB damage. All, all the signs yeah. of the usual premium cards. Mm -hmm. Now, Sketch, you were talking about throwing tickets to try and get him. Would this entice you to want to spend lapis instead of tickets? Uh, so like it's kind of weird, right? Because are they balancing? Are they gonna balance him around you needing this card? Like if he's missing the one flat stat magic, is are the mods lowered to compensate for the one K flat magic? Because mm. if they are, I would probably still pull for tickets for the STMR, but like I don't know how much I'd be using at that point because I do not have the extra lapis to justify pulling for uh, a card with. Uh, Personal wants like coming up. I want like three units in a row. That's gonna be rough as it is without luck. Uh, so, like, it, I personally will probably uh, don't. It, it, it put me in a really awkward position, right? It might even lower the amount of tickets that I even throw if they balance him around that. Mm -hmm. Like, I really hope it's just an EX3 card that I can get eventually. I, 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 feel, I feel like either one of two things is gonna happen. One, they're gonna balance it around this card if he's on the step up, and if you don't have the step up, he's just mid, which is bad. Or mm. they don't balance it around the step up, and then like he's just actually absurd with his card, so now you feel really bad for not having it. Mm -hmm. So like, both, both situations seem bad. I missed the 500 too, so I was kind of hoping that like, hey, maybe this is an EX3 card like the new Elena. That'd be really cool. They normally don't show step up cards during the stream. So like, ah, oh, this is cool. But now I'm like, well, maybe we have no clue now. We're gonna have to wait. We're gonna have to wait a couple of days to find out. But like, it, I, for me personally, I, this, this being on the step up doesn't. It's actually just a negative thing. Like I, I really would dislike that because like I, it's going to be a 28k, 27k, 26 yep. whatever round step up. I yep. don't have that that I'm willing to spend right now for a non favorite unit with like multiple favorites coming up we also have Burleson collab season uh i was i'm a big parasite e fan and that came out of nowhere so that also hit my stash uh so that didn't help but if parasite even on the is on the uh, was available like there's still a chance we can get star ocean which i really want which is like getting <laughs> a port like me me and barry are huge star ocean fans mm -hmm. so, so like they could do that so i have to be kind of careful with that even with all the banners of pulling as it is and it's like this this it for Ch like Chow is not a favorite unit of mine. Like he's cool, but like if this was like if this had been Barrel, yes, because I like like Barrel is like a top ten favorite unit for me. Mm. So like if this was Barrel and this made Barrel like super OP or very strong. Like I'm all in, right? But like Chow doesn't crack like my top twenty. So like because of that, I can't super justify it, especially with us not like having like a Vision World or something else to like supplement Lapis. Um, it, it, it'd be rough. Like, I really hope you, hope you guys are wrong, but like, if you're right, like, it's more like, I'm going to throw some tickets, hope we get an STMR. This STMR is really, really cool. Not to say somebody shouldn't pull. This is just a me thing because like, I, I, I already have idea what teams would I want to use, even if they're bad. Uh, so, or, or they have, or I have to force them. And it's just, it's, it's a bad time period because they're all, because like of the clumps of stuff that like could interest me. So like. Christmas could interest me. Halloween could interest me. We know there's going to be at least one collab, probably two collabs uh, during this season because we normally have three. That could interest me. Parasite Eve, big Parasite Eve fan, had to pull. Uh, interest me. Uh, this unit also doesn't share an element with Aya, uh, mm -hmm. who I really want to use. I like that game. Mm -hmm. So like, that's also kind of like, uh, uh, well, I'm probably not pulling Lapis here. Not, uh, not to say the unit's bad. And if you really like Chow, and Chow has a ton of fans, both for Chow. Like, if you like the kit, find out what the kit is. If you like the kit, this is not me being negative about Chow. It's just like my personal opinion. If that is the step up card and it is balanced in a way for him to like just be kind of meh without it, like DPS wise, I think that like puts me down on the unit a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see what comes up on Tuesday because we'll know more about the banner structure then. Um, I mean, you touched upon something really important. Though, which is that in a, in a roundabout way units have just gotten so expensive mm. and if they mm. throw limited time cards on them too those last at least the card step sometimes even the step prior 
not having anything that goes towards pity mm -hmm. means you're just sinking Lapis even deeper. And so, you know, in the time of us getting ridiculous cost premiums and regular units, you know, I'm I'm sitting with a respectable amount of Lapis, but when pity is one and a half to two times the amount of Lapis that they give you in a month as a free-to-play player, mm -hmm. they're basically telling you to pull once every two months with what they give you available in the game, assuming you adopt the strategy of only pull for units you can go to pity for. Yep. But they've made pity so drastically expensive, let alone the premium cards, let alone getting shards for everybody now, because of course they've decreased the amount of available shards. But, but getting the unit really doesn't matter with the EX3 system. It's true. Yep. You have no, to get you eight of them. See, that's, that's why we need to get more people on the translation team. They, they uh, didn't say that. They said that they want you to spend more. That's what they're really telling you. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I like we're, that. Hey, we're losing money, so we make time. In case you're curious where Chow came from, here's how we got to Chow. Right? So they showed oh, thank us. thank goodness. They showed us how Chow what, what started out. <laughs> they showed us how Chow started out as as a Lunar New Year unit, continued on as a Lunar New Year unit, and now as a Halloween unit. So ridiculous. There you go. Um, they told us a little bit about Chow's full circle backstory here. Um, this was from Chow's seven star version. Talks about. Um, how Chow is the legend of a person, a legend in the form of a dog possessing mysterious powers. Once a valiant guard dog lost his life fighting an assassin. The king survived, though, uh, and uh, lots of people's lives were saved. There's Chow. Like, like Ong. Like Ong. That's a thing. Anyways, I do. I would want to point out the the little. You can't see them in the the picture on the uh, the left hand side, but the picture on the right hand side shows a little better. He's got little paw print like sparkle artifacts mm -hmm. around him it's super adorbs come on they're inside the pumpkin it's so cute and i hope that pumpkin's so it. obnoxious and blocks every other unit <laughs> on the screen i do hope so <laughs> just like elesperus's moon it's like oh wait should we talk about elesperus is now the time to talk about carton too oh, we'll, oh we have so much to talk we're, about we're almost there we're Hold almost on, breathe, there breathe. um they recommended some units you might want to take the clash of wheels with chow um awesome Ivis no, 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 Bruce? no, they didn't recommend them. They said verbatim in the stream, these are must use units mm. with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, they're conveniently are. on banner right now. Yeah, they're oh, conveniently man. on banner. Yeah. I mean, Roos won't be when Chow goes live. Uh, no, but right now as the stream is. Right, well, you could true. go spend right now. Yeah, so. I mean, oh. if you wait till the Chow banner drops, it'd be too late. So you might want to get them now. Must note use. that uh, note that Roost does not actually have Clash of Wills like utility in any way. Mm. Um, but but uh, he's currently on banner. But Tyvus does. And it. we must use him. We must. We must. They also suggested some challenge? older units. Um, <laughs> they suggested that did you, you say have... a, did you say older units to the current banner unit? I don't know. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, older you, you, older units that you could use? No, no mm. one will do that. Never. Ne no, one, no one's going to take on Tiana. Right no one's going to take Tiana, okay? Stop trying to make Tiana happen. Um, oh, no. Evoker is on banner. <laughs> is otherwise kind of a dumpster fire, um, but does have a 50% water repair, a water imperil field. Um, and then Yuna, who's oh, actually no. a unit I don't have, um, does have a 400% oh. stat buff and an LB damage buff and some killer buffs. And Laguna got crowns recently. So, you know, water water utility. Ah, uh, yes. Because everyone loves water units. The water breaker that's definitely not the other one that is usable in Clash of Wills that might be getting upgrades, of course. Yeah, we'll talk about that momentarily. <laughs> but before we do, holy cow, two years later... Full Moon oh, Carton geez. is getting some upgrades. Dual learning dual blade mastery, boosting chain modifier limit when boosting when dual wielding, exceeding the normal chain cap, and getting elemental burst dark. He got an uh, upgrade previously. It was his intrinsic. He does have. An That's intrinsic. what I was about to say. This, this is just saying. Okay, look, you know, y'all didn't like the intrinsic. Our bad. Here's this. <laughs> here's here's his eight time cap for his 150 multiplier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
So Carton. Mm -hmm. So so Carton is here, and now here's here's a question for you guys. Do you think since Carton is getting upgraded that Carton will be available to pull if you're pulling for Chow? Oh yeah, we got the full head cannon for this. All right, all right, everybody. <laughs> Play. Right. Uh, so um, initially, I believe no. I believe on the first few days, no. And there will be a bug report saying we are sorry that Carton was not in the initial poll, and then uh, they will uh, they will patch him in, and they'll be like, we are sorry that Carton was not in the initial poll. Hey, as long as they reimburse us for tickets like they did for Addison and everybody else, I'm good with it. Yeah. Because I've been banking lately off of all these errors, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like how far ahead that you're thinking that, that, that you just assume it's going to be bugged. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at this point, but I like it. Sketch, well, tell me about your head cannon sketch. All right. They're just going to do what they're doing for all the banners lately. Hey, you know how much like some people love or hate? Like, Here's the unit you're pulling for. Here's a small curated pool to, of off banners. Just gonna do all the Halloween units. The bad problem with that is it also means original Obar is probably gonna be in that pool. I know everybody's excited for her since we got her for free last like like from a login. Mm -hmm. Like from from the new Ibarra's login bonus. Yeah, we got the old Ibarra. Yeah, so it's just like I, it's good and bad, right? Like if Carton ends up being usable, which these two things right now don't make him usable. Like if they make him usable by opting his mods a little bit, right? Um, that's cool for people that want because like I was very happy like I said on the last days like hey you know how cool it would be if like they made people I wanted pullable in the uh, the pool and then they put exactly who I wanted in the pool it's some not, people it's not like a, yeah, yeah. Not like I asked and got exactly what I wanted did and you he pull one better. though? huh? did, did you what? pull a Snovlinka though? yep I got one copy there you go. Um, so like, I was very happy, right? And like, that was better than I was thinking. I was thinking like, she's gonna have like her own banner, right? They're just gonna like full send it and be like, hey, if you want this with upgrades, it's not absurd or anything, but if you want the new, the new shiny upgrades, she's gonna have her own upgrades. So like, they did the pool thing, right? Now, some people hate this. Sinzar, wish he was here, absolutely hates the pool. So I'll cover that for him for a second. He hates these curated pool units because like a lot of these units he already pulled for them, right? They're they're either EX3 or close to EX3, so like these things don't do very well. But for people that skip units like me, hey, this is a cool catch-up mechanic. So like, yeah. it's not always gonna be great, and sometimes you're not gonna get the banner unit you wanted, right? But here's the in unlike, here's the thing. The the units they've been adding to these curated pools, it's not like they're adding a bunch of here worn units, right? They're adding like semi recent to good units to these pools, right? Like I know a lot of people didn't have Rain the EX3 or Dwayne the EX3. Dwayne's been great for several Clash of Wills now. Like Snoblinka got upgraded. She's like actually usable instead of garbage. I mean, she was the coolest character in season four to me. So like that was really cool. Um, it's just stuff like that. So like these units aren't like super OP, but they didn't like screw us over hardcore, right? They could have easily been like hey, here's your chance of pulling original Axtar in the pool. Mm. He's the same L. Right? Like, they could have done stuff like that, and they could have been, like, in quotation marks, I'm going to help you build a dark team, so here's original Axtar. He can clear content for you. Like, mm. they could have done stuff like that. Pools haven't been that bad, and it's not going to be great for everyone. But for some people that, that, that skip stuff or can't afford to get everything or just even get unlucky, like, I've, I've been pulling and doing stuff the entire time, and I didn't have Tyvus for, like, 90% of the time he was out till a couple months ago. So like stuff can happen. Like it's cool that you can off in or stuff, but the odds are like, it's better for you to have this pool than playing in the massive off, the massive um, pool, off banner pool that like we normally do with. Like certainly we are very tired of pulling Fiend and Soul. Like absolutely tired of pulling that unit, right? Yes. Guess what's not gonna be in one of these pools? It's more likely that we're gonna get a pool a character that Gert and I don't have an EX3 at the very least. So like it's at least status towards something we may use. And we may not have the unit at all. So mm -hmm. like I it's cool. I could use more cartons. My carton's not EX3. If cartons ends up being good, I'll be very happy or at least decent. So where I can mess around with him for fun. 
hey, guess what? I'll be very happy to get some copies. Like if with tickets, like that's warp tickets. I mean, he's a limited unit. He has a cool design. He has cool attack animations and stuff. He was very popular when he came out. Like this stuff like that. So like I think that's what they're gonna do with the pull. I think they're just gonna be like, here's Abara, here's Carton, here's Lilith, and then here's the featured Chow. Have fun. Yeah. See, I would yeah. I would not be upset about that, except for the fact that the only one of those you just mentioned that I don't have is Cart. So, you know, when I pull a Lilith that I don't need or any Bara that I don't need, um, mm -hmm. I will be salty. Um, but I, I get what you're saying in general. I just I hope that they make Rick Carton available somehow, um, because last mm -hmm. year Carton was not. Um, I was irritated by that when I was throwing tickets for Lilith um, and could not get a Carton. Um, so. Mm -hmm. See, I, I see it, as, as as we sit and talk about it more, I see it going in a somewhat different direction. And I do think that Chow will have unnecessary on-banner, quote-unquote, off-banner units um, that will be potentially more beneficial to him being a water unit. Oh, so gosh. I could easily see Lulu. them throwing Yuna <laughs> and Lulu and Laguna yeah. and potentially new Guardian Tidus on this banner. And yeah. then I see a second banner of only Halloween units where every single rainbow is one of those stupid Halloween units that you've pulled a <laughs> hundred of at this point. And the, there's three Neos on banner, which of course gives you Carton, original Ibarra and Lilith on their own separate banner that is just Halloween units. Because that just that feels like the most Gumi thing to do. Either way, please make Carton available for players who don't have him. At least people people want their you know TMR and STMRs and stuff like that. Mm. It'd be insane to give us upgrades and not put him on a banner. It There's no insane. way. It would be insane. They've done insane stuff before. Don't put it past them. Uh, totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Speaking of upgrades that I'm actually excited about, Kaito um, getting upgrades to several things: his base limit burst, his shift limit burst. Um, and his natural flux abilities all getting upgraded. Love it. I think it's great. Oh yeah, I'm with all of this. I've been using him in every cow except the last one. So hey, bring it on. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he's not terrible because he does do a two a 200 uh, AOE um, spirit killer buff for the party on on this one. So potentially useful. Mm -hmm. And even though they're less important, he still has 90 breaks inside a cow. So it's, mm -hmm. and now why a 160 not? water, um, mm -hmm. water break, um, and you know his his damage is going up quite a bit. I mean, he's going up to he's going over 100. I mean, over 100 x modifier, um, on his on his LB. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have a 150 amp though, does he? No, he has a 60. Yeah. To be fair, mm -hmm. I don't expect a lot out of breakers though. Mm -hmm. True. But he could when he first came out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll, I think this what this says is when you bring him as a breaker, he will be able to contribute on the damage to mm -hmm. something you can recognize. Yep. Sure. It'll be yeah. it'll be a little better. Yeah. Yep. So there's that. And here's what you're going to be taking him to: the Clash of Wills Dog Spirit of Unknown Origin, the Inugami. Best sprite in the last year. It's so adorable. It actually is. I I really like it. So it's dog v dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I didn't know if it was sarcasm at first, so I was thinking, I like it. What's wrong with it? Oh no, no, no. This is this, <laughs> no, is, the this best. is super cute. This is my favorite Clash of Wills sprite in the last year. Yeah. Easy. No. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah, this is a good one. This is so much better than um, Robot Chicken Dragon a couple months uh -huh. back. Robot Chicken Dragon. It's not <laughs> weird. It's actually like cool, but also kind of scary and spiritual, and yeah. it's good. I like the colors a lot. Ultra mega. Well, we have to see what they do with it at 99. This should just be the initial first version. You, You're right. you know they're going to give it purple fire. They always yes. give it freaking yeah. purple fire. <laughs> Maybe they'll give it purple lightning. Ugh. Anyways, the day these... when they change the background for Clash of Was Rose, that supposed please? to be a last will pun? No, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's, more a, it's more a commentary that they... So, so a couple... Lack, actually, last year. Last year, Lilith's cow boss had green fire on this on this screen that they showed and then mm -hmm. level 99 the per the fire turned purple i was so mad because finally we we're getting color other than purple and they made it purple anyways i digress <laughs> beast fairy reaper of, wait of... to water light and dark 
a lot of anger about purple, but I love purple. It's Purple's the only great. color for the final boss. It's how you know it's the final boss. It turns purple. Right. It's yeah. it, it, enemies are grape in FFBE. That's all I'm saying. Let it be lime for once, please. Well, unfortunately, it's season one of Clash of Wills, so yes. the cupcake is present. I hope so. Because last month was a little ridiculous for lots of oh, reasons. Last... <laughs> well, I guess the boss itself will be easy. The modifier bugs will be unbeatable. Ah, yes. <laughs> Give us an element mod. Let's go. Let's do it. Oh, this, this, <laughs> this boss uses water, dark, and non-elemental magic. Uh, fixed damage and fractional damage and reduces your party's ability to heal. All the fun things that we're, we're enjoying lately. Um, make sure you do water, light, or dark damage every turn to avoid counterattacks. Um, you deal certain elemental damage based on the boss's various skills. And they tell you um, that you should bring units that are effective against their type, like Guardian of the Underworld Chow, Data of War Tivus, and Void Mage Roka. Yeah, yes. water and light and dark damage every turn of avoid counterattack. Why? So we can just make it stronger? <laughs> yes. Because... Uh. That. Yeah, I'm still salty about the, how the last one worked. Yeah. It's counterintuitive. Counterintuitive, for sure. Anyways, there's your tips. Um, and the boss looks really cool. This made me sad. They're they're upgrading the armor. Now, I, I think getting the armor up on par with the other armors that we have is good. But come on, can we please get a shield? Can we get a an attack hat or a, ta a magic hat? Not I a... miss new items to look forward to. Yeah, like, <laughs> no kidding. I I I agree. I think I do think that. I mean, the numbers, the increases on these are good, right? Two thousand attack versus three hundred attack or a mat, HP. Uh, HP, huge, right? Oh. Um, twenty more defense and spirit. You know, filling more mm -hmm. morale. All th these numbers are all great. Uh, I love. I this really one. like the next one. The yeah. Um, yeah. No, the next page one. The next page one, yeah. Let's go ahead and show that one. Um, the Swordsman says, yeah. um, nullifies like death, gives you a nullify stop and charm. Like, this is huge. This is huge. That's that's very good. I'll never yeah. use it because I won't even buy the recipe. <laughs> that's very good. That's I can't very remember which one I have right there. now. I think I have the stop, Arcanist. Stop charm and death. Yep. The three it's... pillars of Halloween. Mm -hmm. Totally. Actually, the pillar of Halloween is the enemy has to be bugged by casting rays on it. Oh, mm -hmm. oh please. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> oh, good times. But yeah, so weapons. I mean, new armors for people who have enough um, Xenostone to get it. Uh, potentially cool. Um, they showed us some login bonuses. They are giving an NV guaranteed 10 plus 1 Halloween. So that makes me wonder, like, is that only going to be that? Is that guaranteed Neo going to be a Halloween unit? Yes. Like, like, there's your carton. I hope so. If that's not my carton, I'm going to come after you, Sketch. Um, I do suspect it excludes new chat, fun. though. I would suspect that, too. I would not be surprised. Um, Actually, getting... I would think it would have... Well, I was going to say all of them, but equal, but there's only a few. There's only a few. There's four. There's yeah, four. that's a 25% yeah. chance of getting the banner. Yeah, it, it might exclude him. Yeah. I was thinking it would have them all. That would that's, be that's a too high really chance nice. That would be a really nice treat and not so much of a trick. Well, especially well, if what trick I don't understand. Are... Uh, I think. So, yeah, do they do tricks for Halloween? What are you throw about? eggs at people. Only with houses. toilet paper. Um, you are getting a, a, a guaranteed another guaranteed Neo out of the the, the summon B tickets, the seven summon B category, which is pretty good. I got my Ellis Paris out of a summon B category recently, um, and then guaranteed Rainbow, pretty much. Um, and more. Um, so make sure you log in every day and get those. Um, and then they showed us some updates. So here's some new things that they're adding. Um, the new icons. So uh, somebody who's played JP, tell me about why this matters. It's just a visual representation of the breaks. Okay. Or buffs or whatever. Okay. So that you don't have yeah. to open up a menu to see it. It's just on screen. Okay. So mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all it's for. To me, it looks cluttered and unnecessary. That's just me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very small. Yeah. Like, I'm old. I'm going to need my glasses for sure. Um, but, you know, it's new information there. Um, then they also said we're getting more raid orbs. So we're going from five to ten. I'm here for that. Great. Well, Are they going to let me use all ten at once? No. No. 
then I could not care less. But notice, I I hate raids. I love that the the raid that they're showing though for this is a raid that existed a long time ago. Um, Mar the March on Garuda <laughs> raid was a long You're time so ago. But it also says <laughs> until 11 3 2023. Oh, it's funny. Makes me wonder. Is that coming back? <laughs> It, either it's coming back or they just like literally picked something to test it on. Yeah. Oh, I hope. Not. Now it does also say the feature is still under development, so we'll see how it's going to go. But, you know, 10 raid orbs. Then they said that more reward tiers are being added for event point milestones for World Visions and Dark Visions. Um, points obtainable and number of points needed is going to increase. You will get five more lapis at rank uh, one. Yeah, it's going to make it harder for normal people to get all the rewards, basically. Mm -hmm. But more. Yeah, that's my fear. It's just going to be added to the back end, is what I'm afraid of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the so, points. I hope not. Because you, you already pretty much have to get through the final boss to get everything anyway. So if they just add more mm -hmm. points, I think they're just going to add the to add to the total. You have to do more on the final boss, and then they'll just sprinkle some stuff some rewards in the middle just to make it feel better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they do that, though, and they put more of an emphasis on total score than anything, uh, that might actually encourage people to start bringing actual teams to the final stage and stop caring about the damage received score mm -hmm. because you'll get so many more points for doing higher damage and proper setups than you're going to lose for taking damage. Yeah. That has been more of a thing lately. So, so there might be something to that. Where question for Barry. Question for Barry here. Um, so sure. what? Well, obviously, a lot of us don't care about dark visions that much, right? Mm -hmm. So how would you feel if, like, top one K dark visions, right? Had like eight to ten K lapis added. Like just as a this is a reward for for top one K. Does that top like does that give you enough does that give you enough motivation to try to top one K every dark vision? I kinda do anyway. Sure. Um to be honest. So I mean that's just more for me personally, that's more lapis for doing what I'm kind of already doing anyway. Mm. Um so I mean it it doesn't necessarily give me more motivation. It just gives me more return on the investment of the time I'm putting into doing it. Okay, so like, Gert, me and you don't really care too much for, for Dark Visions. Does that right. make you want to try really hard for like a, a, a like, like 8 to 10k Lapis? Is that like, because for me, I think that's enough motivation for me to try it, to actually try and care. Because like, I used to and then I got super burnt out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for me, the difference between getting 1 1k or 10k is enough to make mm -hmm. me run variants in a World of Visions event. You know, like it, it does make me work for it when I know that I can hit a measurable, targetable, achievable, attainable goal that once mm -hmm. I hit it, I yes. mean, once I hit it, I'm good and I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm willing mm -hmm. to do that now for dark visions. Here's the problem. I'm going to push. I'm going to push for that. I'm going to get to like, you know, rank two or three hundred. And then a week, the day of, you know, 700 people are going to push me down. And then any work that I put into it in the last 30 minutes is going to be completely null and void. Um, that's what I hate about it. And I mean, there, there's been a couple where like I'm refreshing it, biting my nails and, until until the, the server goes down, only to find out that, oh, look at that. I landed 1,008. And like, I would be really grouchy about that. Unfortunately, you can almost guarantee that all 50 to well, 150 true. players are getting kicked off the list because they can't true. fix their own bugs and they keep punishing people for using the bugs that they refuse to remove from the game. So, you know, there's there's that. I but did. I think I if did. they're going to if we're going to add up. new rewards, putting them into milestones makes the most sense rather than ranking. Mm -hmm. The ranking rewards are so it's just not worth it yeah. because the amount of lapis that the top you know, 200 players are putting into it to get, you know, a negligible percentage of it back as a return, yeah. as a quote unquote reward. It's eh, it's just not worth it. Yeah. I hate dark visions. Me too. <laughs> yeah, so I used to, I 
I used to tend to run top 50 in there, but after a while, you kind of realize it's just, if you, well, I do it manually. So that's it's another exhausting. big part of the deal. So do I. Yeah, so do I. It's, way, it's way too much work to try to stay top 50. And that's the only, I think it's what, 10K at that point? Mm -hmm. And then after that, it just doesn't feel like it's worth the effort. So I've mm -hmm. kind of just, I've kind of gotten burned out of it myself. I, I think the last, the last one I got maybe top 300. And then before that, I was barely under 10K because I didn't even do the last boss at all. So there's not really a whole lot that's motivating anybody who's not one of your top 10, top 25, top 50 to really want to push for it. Mm -hmm. I tend to fall in like the, the 200 to 250s, but like that doesn't matter because you're getting the same reward as number 101 as you are 499 and 500. So it's just the, yep. the, the tiering of it all is kind of weird. And the, the significant degree of drop off between one to 10 to 100 is so staggering that like you basically are trying to invest hundreds to thousands of dollars into this game a month to make sure you have everything and then that doesn't even account for the amount of time you have to spend to do it it's just it was it fun when we could share it it could be a full-time job mm -hmm. and then you're paying thousands of dollars yeah right it's like yeah, being a student sometimes all I back at it. i'm ashamed of myself when i think about how i've spent a whole saturday and or sunday just rerunning variants mm -hmm. <laughs> just to end up being like 55 or 60. Mm -hmm. I, like, I could have I could have just stopped a week ago and still been here. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how this shakes out. Um, and then this one, which made us all scratch our heads a little bit, a new oh, gauge dear. will be added that can be utilized to add more depth to content. So is this just press for more information combat style? <laughs> It looks like it's a morale toggle to me. Yeah, it's an it's an eyeball. Um, it's a dripping eyeball. Yes, it is. The eyeball of morality. Mm. Mm. I wonder if this is going to be like a not a breakage. What is it in FF13? Uh, uh, Maybe it'll st stagger. There's some kind of gate. There you go. Maybe it'll stagger. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to be something like that. Oh God! But can you imagine having to time your stagger? and your damage setups at the same time and now, still put that's just as bad as how the break gauge they used to be did but remember they said this. yes yeah they said something about doing they want to implement something where you kind of got to time your setup so that you oh, can take right. advantage of some kind of bonus time um you're what's right. all the way oh, to fun. the left there where it's looks like a lapis symbol and it says 10. Oh, uh, that's oh, a good question. Uh, I can't. Yeah, I bet you that is a. Um, so a lot of times those morale skills have counters on them. Um, so I bet you that's just a new a new symbol with it's like a ten turn counter on it. Yeah, um, that tends to be the boss's morale abilities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so they just gave it a lapis symbol for it. Okay. Yeah, yeah that that symbol's probably because it's so high. Because if you notice, the shapes tend to kind of correlate with a turn frame. Like maybe one to two turns would be this shape, mm -hmm. two to three. I think so. I have to go back. I don't, I don't want to spew lies. Uh, but that's and, my and guess. It's probably just the design for that amount of turns. I'm um, I'm looking at the um the eyeball and the little tears look like they would be consumed. Mm. So like one of the tears mm. would go away whenever something happens or you mm -hmm. use something or the boss uses something. So whatever it is could probably only happen yeah, let's, three let's times. See if I can't make this bigger. Let me. Uh... Yeah. yeah, that could be. Yeah, um, my guess is it's going to be some kind of stagger it. system, and you can only pull it off that many times before it's irrelevant. Yeah, that's I what I think. Too. All right, let's see here. We're gonna make that really big. Shoot, sorry, I'm doing this on the fly. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Hmm. I agree based on what you're seeing there like maybe like maybe the bar like shifts side to side mm -hmm. and, and like you activate it to get bonus points during that time or get bonus effects during that time or maybe they give you a set number of times that you're allowed to damage at high volumes mm, so if right. they only let you tag or toggle three turns worth of damage and every other time that you have to I, I don't know that that doesn't sound like depth to gameplay to me that sounds like slow Annoying down and play game my game play. longer 
Uh huh. Yeah. Spend more time in my game. That way you feel like you need to pull for the unit more because it'll help you spend less time in the game. Frustration.exe. Oh gosh. What what if only certain units were allowed to do things during that time span? Like you got certain <laughs> units. Certain <laughs> units. Don't give them ideas, man. Certain <laughs> units that are currently on banner can benefit from this bonus side. Oh my gosh. All other units get a stop effect. Oh man. Only CW Water can take advantage uh -huh. of this bonus damage during oh, this bonus please time. Please don't. Please don't. Worse yet, they make it a whole new unit tag. Bonus time uh. units. <laughs> With its own uh, leader skill that you have to pull for. Whatever it is, CW like... CW bonus. I, like, it's... The game's currently, like... Clash of Wills is currently, like, having major bugs, and they're going to stack what could be new bugs on top of that? I, I don't know. So, you, you, you're... To correct you, it will be new bugs. Oh, <laughs> like, 100%. Yeah, it's just they like your bugged be. banners. This is going to have bugs. I mean, like, oh, this this oh. is nuts, and and they could do they could do even worse things too. They could be like like it was kind of hinted at by one of you, like they could just be like, yeah, man, uh, units that are featured during this class will say, so this week and next week, cool. Those are the only units you can use to get this ability bonus. Have fun. Or like, I mean, what if you can only use that gauge of your ex three? Oh no. I think this, I, that, that would ruin what little fun people are having left in this thing. Yeah, did There's anybody no way play, they could do that and keep people around. Did anyone play Brave Frontier? That yeah, has like any is is there any context to this? Because there have been some somewhat decent similarities well, into Frontier how the things have ended progressed. Ended like two years ago, mm -hmm. so they're kind of like pulling stuff out of thin air now. I see. Okay. Well, then how long until we hear Gummy's next Brave game? Well, right now, we just sample War of the Visions. You kind of watch what they're doing over there to see what we get. Because, in my opinion, NV Plus is kind of just what they do over there. Uh, you pull a bunch of units, you end up with a bunch of shards and mind spheres. This is just when I last played. I quit a while back. But you'll pull a bunch of unit, or you'll pull, you have to pull like 14 copies of a unit or something crazy to max them out. And then on top of that, they open up this whole extra area of the grid you had to have even more copies of the unit or what they were calling mind spheres at the time and uh you would use those to further build the unit out and that's kind of what mv plus is doing over in jp mm -hmm. where uh the older units all your spare shards you just use them to boost random stats so mm -hmm. when i have questions about what they're doing i try to just kind of fill out what war the vision is doing yeah, and see what like they're gonna try to bring over here the mind spheres is essentially like once you got a unit to ex3 you could use additional shards to actually start unlocking their skills yeah pretty much yuck really all they need to do to make people care is to give us blank shards i would care a lot of people would care yeah Gross. let's have let's have omni shards or in a way you kind of ended up with a system over there uh where you would be able to get coins that you can exchange mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. so oh okay sure so did. a lot of you already know about it mm -hmm. yeah so if you if you pretty much because you only get one of one character that whole thing you don't have like dupes of a, of a particular unit mm -hmm. so when you pull extras beyond once you max it out then they would give you coins that you can use to exchange for all kinds of different stuff but included in that would be mind spheres for whatever whatever you know any other units you might be trying to finish out yeah mm -hmm. That so be nice. I wouldn't be surprised if that made its way here to make up for the MV plus issues. Sure. But that's that's a separate thing. That's that's way for JP's anniversary. That's off topic. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's OK. So back to this one. This is our last slide. Amazingly, we've we've done it. Um, our standard gifts for the awesome live stream. Which oh, this is the best part. Yeah. Awesome. I, just, I, I feel like for <laughs> trick or treat, we can't do a little more. Right. Well, they did say it's, watch it's their the socials. Oh, this is the trick. You're right. This is the trick he didn't understand. They didn't. They didn't give <sighs> us the thing that we're supposed to watch their socials for. They told us to watch for something in their socials. Yes. It didn't come yet. Um, they also just throwing out <clears throat> there brought up again to make sure that you are um, subscribing so that we can hit the milestone rewards, get that master's crown. They've been trying uh, for so hard. They really have been trying for a long time. And I I still say the same thing. You want people to follow your content, then make content. You know, you can't just sure. do live streams. So 
like i i as someone who owns a business if you want your ads to pop up on people's facebook pages and you're not putting out any original content whatsoever your your ads will regardless of how much money you're putting into your ad spend you are going to not fall in front of your audience mm. because all it is is it's a systematic repeating of the same content over and over leading to out leading to people scratching their heads wondering why no one cares mm -hmm. i just the only the only stuff i ever see is like hey here's a unit that we released two weeks ago and here's their cg limit burst yeah they've been doing that recently yes history of cg limit bursts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how about let's bring let's bring arix back and watch him be a new player going through the game like he did for that one episode yep so, or just or, like introduce us to other people that work at the office. Be like, this is so and so. They've worked here for this long. True. I would watch that. I would watch like, a whole series watching Justin play the game. I watch them hang Halloween decorations. I would watch. I'd love. He doesn't I, know I, FFP I, exists. I, I, I'd love to watch a quiz show with him of just asking him questions about FFBE that don't oh. exist in War of the Visions. I be would like, be his Can you Alex name Trebek. this unit? I would be the Alex Trebek for that in a heartbeat. If it's what not is the name of the Arabian, very first town? The name the very first town. Just... <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> Who, who's the first Esper you get in game? There you go. I don't mean, I don't mean to just punch at him. It was just frustrating because <clears throat> when I was playing one of the visions, I would see him in the the WOTV Reddit, and then I go to the FFB Reddit, and he is nowhere to be found. He doesn't so care about F FFBE. He he does War of the Visions, and he's shackled with FFBE is the way I feel. Yeah, I don't mean to take any digs at him. It's just from my observations back then, I was just like, Ugh, okay, so this is how and, it is. And this is my personal opinion. I think he just doesn't want to do FFBE, and he's hoping somebody will take it from him. Like, because... <laughs> but that brings me to a thing I remember seeing. I believe I saw him not long ago. He was on a live stream, I believe, with some other players, and they were just... Like discussing game mechanics and how to do battles and stuff. Oh, and were the visions? Yeah. Oh Did yeah, no, he does that? like live streams and uh, he does competitions. He organizes competitions. Um, he does live streams. He um uh actually plays and engages with them in content. And yeah, um, yeah no, it's it's very active. So that's what I was thinking. Like, why don't why do why don't they have that for us? Because that would do a lot for the community. We used to. Of course, everybody's gonna want to see Sinzar for sure. And then everybody knows Flip, as far as I know. Tons of people know Barry, as far as I know. You could have random people pull from, you know, Kamikiro. I don't know, since they're dropping Spanish, I don't know if they have somebody who could talk He's with him. He's still going to continue covering the game, though, so. Well, yeah, I mean, I know he knows English, too. But, uh, I mean, you could have just random people just suddenly pop up one day, like, hey, by the way, we got in touch with this creator, and uh going to go over and how to do this scripted. trial with him. Yeah, you could have it fully scripted. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when it seems like we don't exist to you, <laughs> we're just uh, a wallet. It's just like, uh. yep. And then you look at the world of uh, the WOTV side, and they've got full streams of teaching you how to run guild battles. It's just like, come on, man. <laughs> well, in in that defense, sort of. Um, so we're a single player game, mm -hmm. and they're a PvP based game. If they can't get people to uh, do the PvP then they won't have spenders. That's but true. For us, they just need to keep releasing Clash of Wills type content or whatever. Yeah, ranked content. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. But how? It, well, I don't know. You can't have any single players if no one's playing the game, so they should at least consider that one every now and again. <laughs> I I've have said, though, multiple times that this is you know, one of my favorite single player games that I play with other people because I do play with other Indeed. people. Like I talk to people and I interact with people and I try and help people and I discuss things with people and, you know, sketch keeps me honest. Um, and yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, that's the main reason I still play. I still like to talk with all of you and the mm -hmm. other chats I'm in about it. You know, somebody might need some help with something. Like, oh, okay, cool. This is something interesting we could try to work out. Yeah, absolutely. That's the main reason I'm still in it. Even though he never finds my units, I still like to build stuff for Senzar that he never finds. Hey, the friends list is perfect in all ways. Okay, do not do uh -huh. not attack the friends list. 
I know the game. everybody, don't fear. JP just got a refresh button that War Divisions has had since it released. Wow. Right. Oh, no, you want to talk, talk fixed friend system. The Chinese client had it three years ago. Like, oh, so wow. JP just got it? That's yeah. all oh, true. Because, uh, because it requires, like, um, sort of like building the game from, like, the, like, yeah, it's the core client. Core client. Oh, up. Well, true. It's just funny just to think about. They, didn't, didn't the Chinese <laughs> server also have like limits though on how much time you could spend in the game? So having a refresh system, eventually it, it did. made sense to have a refresh because then you could like it didn't when it started. Or yeah, well, after something. there was a law put in from yeah. the Chinese yeah. government. Yeah. Okay. But at, whenever that was built in game, it didn't. Hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah, okay, I was gonna just make a joke that I'll know the game is almost over the second they fix the friend system. Oh. Uh oh! Well, JP uh, already did it, so well, time is ticking. No. Well, let's find out, I guess. <laughs> so, huh. so here we are. We've come to the end of our slides, and we've now almost talked for three times the amount of time that we yeah. did. We're Easy. we're we're an hour and fifty minutes in, and uh, yeah, here we are. Wow. No, this is normal. It's like, been a journey. Uh, it's been a journey, boys. That's true. Um. It's the it, most it's... fun two hours of my month. <laughs> oh yeah, no, this is the this is the best FFB content that I say all the time. One one uh small last thing. Where was the Alasperius information? Oh, I don't know. I got on this about Carla until they gave it to us. Like every time, like where was the information? It didn't have to be this week. It didn't have to be this month. Can you just tell us that it's coming still? That you didn't forget about it. Or give us an idea of like what you're working on, even if it's just a concept thing for everywhere. Where is any of the information? They were doing. To be honest, speak, oh, sorry. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> no, you're good. Oh no, but to be honest, like the the whole you know everything surrounding NVAs is kind of why I didn't expect them to talk about it so soon. Because every time we've had a concern about something, it's always been kicked down the road until they finally felt like dealing with it. And then they'll say, "Oh, hey, by the way, we have information on this thing, and now that we're ready for it, we're willing to talk about it." They just ended language support for like a hundred languages, so I assume they have so much time now. <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 weird because it was like an extra kick in the face because like. Oh, you guys were waiting for all the spirit changes, right? Well, here's these Kaido changes that may not matter. Like, it was just like, like oh. double down on the, well, this is very awkward. Um, I, for the whole language support being discontinued, um, there there could be a uh, bright side to it. Uh, because one thing they've always kind of said was we can't do that because of all the languages that we'd have to translate that into. Sure. And now they don't have to do that. So they actually have the possibility to not, well, maybe not use that excuse, but release more content mm -hmm. or maybe more story events or whatever it is um, that they weren't able to before because language barriers and not being able to get it into all the languages. But now that's not a barrier. So maybe it's a good thing. Could, could be okay for some players and less okay for others. Yeah, we'll have to see. People still playing yeah, in a language that is supported, that is true. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, my thoughts about it were is, you know, of course you're going to lose some people in the process, unfortunately. There's no way around that. But um, my general thought was those are the two languages that a majority of the world at least can read. So they can get away with it. You know, unfortunately, again, you'll lose some people. But I think it'll still be enough to maintain the game should they so choose. And then, like you said, it kind of frees you up to work around other things. So I didn't think this is necessarily the end of the road, you know, the writing on the walls, everybody's putting it. I just, it just, uh, it, it doesn't look good, <laughs> but I, I think it's, I don't think it's near as bad as it sounds. Any other closing thoughts? We've, we've, we've done well tonight. My issue is, although the pat, the last cow is gone, and it's pretty much irrelevant now. I still wish they would have addressed it. At least it would have shown that they cared. Mm -hmm. And they actually listened to feedback. But the fact that they didn't acknowledge that at all, nor did they give us like a somber moment about shutting down other languages. It's, it's, uh, it's just, Lumi, what are you doing? See, or Square I think, Enix, I guess, in this case. I, I think that there is no way that they can come out and say, you're right, that was bugged, without having to also go back and fix it. Um, 
or at least a, mm -hmm. like do something about it. So I think at this point for them to say, you're right, there was a problem would be near impossible. However, I think that they could just have said, we understand that, that you have concerns about why that was an issue and we won't be doing that again. Right, that's what I was expecting. Just like, hey, okay, look, y'all didn't like it, our bad. You know, yeah. we heard your feedback, we'll take it into the future. Just at least that would have at least made us feel like yeah. they listened. But yeah, <laughs> I, I sent them a message asking about the Rondos, like I think a couple of days into it, and mm -hmm. they didn't get back to me even after maintenance, this past maintenance. Oh. So that well, was basically almost two weeks. To be fair, like I, I would guess most of their tech support is wrap, was wrapped up in Facebook during that time. Uh, and that's well, what I was going to get to. I was going to say, I can give them a week for Facebook. Yeah. And it's like, you couldn't even just acknowledge that. Facebook you know, was like, hey, by the way, weeks. we're still working on this. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. We'll, we'll just have to see how it goes moving forward. That was my only thing. Just, just make us feel like you care, and that'll go a long way. Yeah. I do assume, though, uh, and this, I mean, it matters for me, but I assume that the new clash of wills cap was not going to be just limited to last last month that it's going to be it's going to be the way it is going forward um for both morale and for clash the the damage cap um but i i severely hope that future bosses don't have the absurd morale generation at the, at the last four turns that the uh the most recent one did Oh, maybe this um, also in particular was limiting, but I hope the damage cap doesn't stay necessarily that high. I just I like the freedom to ex experiment and yeah. having such a high damage cap kind of limits you mm -hmm. pretty hard. Yeah. All righty. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, you guys have been great. Thank you so much for giving me, you know, basically two hours of your of your Sunday evenings and Monday mornings <laughs> at this point. Um, for us to talk about it, it's always a pleasure. And thank you for you know, for some of you for being part of these from the very beginning of the beige carpet. Um, looking forward to seeing where these go from here. Um, just because this one was a little rough, you know. There have been some ones that have been a little rough as far as like how the live streams go, and I feel like this one is maybe more on the rough end and maybe not as like super exciting as like last month. They can't all be winners, I guess. Um, but I love the the differences in everybody's feedback and opinions because that allows us to have really good discussion, um, which is what this channel really aims for is discussion. So I appreciate you guys. These have been fun. Hey, for thanks you. for having me. I guess it sounds like we're on our way out. So I'll just give a, a hearty Feliz Cumpleaños to the beige carpet. <laughs> and uh, hopefully the game keeps, keeps going and you can have several more of these along the way. Amen, for sure. Thank you, thank you. Happy to have, happy to have been here fun. from the very first one. It's been a good time. Very good, very good. Well, to all of you who are amazingly still watching, hope you've had a good evening and a good time, and we will see you in whatever comes next, probably on Tuesday. Good night, everybody. Ooh. Good night. Good night. Y'all take care.